Monica, let's start out January by wishing everyone a happy new year. We can still do that for the whole month, I think. I think so. I think it's appropriate for the whole month. So happy new year. Um, (laughs) We hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And you celebrated with friends, family, and everyone special to you. And because January is both of our birth months, I thought it would be fun to dig into all things January and Monica. Love it. Like I said, really can't pick a better subject than Monica. I hope everyone is prepared for a 10 part series in Monica. 10 parts. <laughs> 10 parts. I mean, clearly. They might all be <laughs> two minutes a piece, but you know, it's 10 parts. Are we starting with January 1st? Well, so let's start with where the name January comes from. I was kind of curious. And I think in the back of my head, I kind of knew. So January is a winter month in the Northern half of the world. Duh. <laughs> and it's a summer Thanks, month. For the su- it's a summer month for the Southern half. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so- <laughs> yeah. So Australia, happy summer. Hmm. It's named after the Roman God of new beginnings, Janus. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So that would that be Latin? Does uh, Professor Garniops need to come in and tell you if you pronounce that properly? Oh, we're going to ask him. I have him on speed dial. (laughs) So Janus is Latin and it means arched gateway. And did you know it's also related to the word janitor, which initially meant keeper of the gate? Well, I actually didn't know that, even though I recognized that word right there, Janus, as one of the words I was showing Brady all of my old Latin and told him how I don't remember any of it. So could you pronounce Janus? Probably 20 years ago. So the way this is spelled here, when I say let's talk about Janus, it looks like Lanus, Lanus? Yes. In Latin, Lanus. Okay. So January is the first month in the Gregorian calendar, which is different from another calendar that we'll talk about in a little bit. Well, what's the Gregorian calendar? The Gregorian calendar was started by... King Gregory? (laughs) Not King. I'm just guessing. Not King. Pope. (laughs) Pope. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, okay. Pope Gregory. That's right. Pope Gregory the 13th in 1582. Okay. So he basically said, nope, we're done with his calendar. <laughs> we're Which, done with that one. We're done with the Julian calendar. That's what yeah. the other one was. We'll just skip right ahead and we'll talk about the Julian calendar. Pope Gregory the 13th said, we're done with the Julian calendar. We're moving to the Gregorian calendar, which what's his name again? Oh, Pope Gregory, (laughs) could you imagine having the hubris to be like, nah, we're doing my way with the calendar, with how we record time? Could you imagine? Yeah. So I'm like, he didn't name it for anyone other than himself. 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 Very interesting. Among other issues I have. Anyway, let's not digress. No. So the Gregorian calendar celebrates the new year on the 1st. Okay. So that's why we have December 31st, New Year's Eve, January 1st, New Year's Day. Everyone goes out and uh, what do they call it? Amateur night on the 31st. I've never heard that. You've never heard that? No. So amateur night is when all the people that don't go out and party decide they're going to go out and party and it's a hot mess. Oh gosh, for sure. It's a hot mess. So I don't call it that anymore because hi, I'm over 40. So I'm home with my kids. Yeah. (laughs) Or, you know, at least pretending to be. But there are other cultures that celebrate the new year on different dates. So my parents converted to Russian Orthodox when I was about 25. And since then, they celebrate all the holidays with the Orthodox calendar. And so the Orthodox calendar has never changed. It's still the Julian calendar. So they celebrate New Year's on January 14th. They celebrate Easter on a different day. They celebrate Christmas on a different day. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. That's definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. I would like to get a little further into that, but I'm not going to and comment and make some comments, but there's a lot of comments to be had. You're just going to comment on the comments? I'm just going to comment that I'd like to comment, but I'm not going to comment. All right. (laughs) So then we also have the Chinese calendar, which I'm totally fascinated by, which is Looney Solar, and it follows the moon and the sun. So they celebrate new year on a different day every year. And it falls between sometime between January 22nd and February 22nd. It's never the same. Now that is also interesting, but I guess it makes sense if it's following the moon, the moon, the moon and the sun. That's right. 
And one of the things that coincides with that is the Chinese Zodiac. So, you know, you might be born in, let's say, 1965. I'm sorry, but the Chinese Zodiac is the lamest of all the Zodiacs. I'm putting oh it God, out there. I love it. What? You I can be it. like a rat or a goat or something. And there's only like nine of them. And that's all you can ever be. And the only well, one I, that matters is the year of the dragon. Let's be honest. No, it's I mean, the coolest. It sounds super fun. I think no. I'm a goat or something stupid. Yeah, no, we'll go into that. I know exactly what you are. I know exactly what you are. I did the research, Monica. Did you do any show prep? I did none. You know what I did? I vacuumed the living room. Well, you know, (laughs) such is the new year for deep cleaning. Yes. So there are other holidays or like celebrations that happen in the month of January, early in January to ring in the new year. So one of them is Three Kings Day. And even though I'm Hispanic, we did not grow up celebrating Three Kings Day, but it's a very widely celebrated day in Europe, Spain, and Latin America. El Dia de los Reyes. I said that pretty well. Hmm. I think that you did, not that I would know, but it sounded beautiful on this end. Thank you. It marks the glorification of baby Jesus by the three wise men. That makes sense. You know, uh, it's funny because we put the nativity out and then you're like, oh, and then the wise men came. But obviously, if you read the actual Bible, they came much later. Right. So in this tradition, you don't put the wise men out until Three Kings Day. What's so funny about that, though, is like they came like years later, I think. I don't know. Okay. So we're being technical. (laughs) But in this tradition, it's 12 days. So it's that's literally the 12th day of Christmas. Oh, that's cool. And I do like that you wait to bring out the three wise men. That's pretty cool. So if you have a nativity, you wait to bring it out. And it's the 12th day of Christmas. And the wise men brought what? Gifts. Gold. There are gifts that are bestowed upon the kids right? There are shoes that are left out. Oh, for the okay. Gifts. Yeah. So there are a lot of cross traditions that happen because in Holland, you also leave out your clogs uh, mm-hmm. to have Santa put things, you know, oranges or coal, if you're terrible. <laughs> uh, Do you imagine that. actually getting coal? Wouldn't that be awful as a small child? What if you needed to heat your house? You might be super excited. True, but you are getting it because you're naughty, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe not. That's for another time. So gifts are bestowed, and this is technically the day in these cultures where the tree can actually be taken down after this day. So you leave it all the way through the 6th. I would like to comment on that, an actual real comment. January 6th is my anniversary. So while I do not participate in Three Kings Day, I do not take my tree down until after January 6th. Oh, I love that. I think that's cool. This year, I didn't take it down until well after the 6th because of a lot of reasons. Yeah. Uh, mine's still up or yeah, I just took mine down. Okay. Yeah. No, so I'm like <laughs> trying to talk in the future. I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So yeah. the other cool thing about three Kings day is that there's a special tradition called Rosca de Reyes, which is the King's cake and get this. It's shaped in a, into a wreath. It has nuts oh. and candied fruit, which represent jewels of the Magi's crown. And you hide a tiny baby Jesus within the cake. Okay. That is, that sounds like the thing that happens. I don't know what it's called, but around Mardi Gras, it's not the same thing. Okay. Is it the same thing? I don't know that I couldn't find out in the research that I did because I was short on time, but it does sound extremely familiar to the King's cake that happens around Mardi Gras. I'm sure it all has to do with Jesus regardless. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you receive the doll in your serving, it means that you have to host the Candleman celebration in February, which ties into Mardi Gras. Anyway, so that is Three Kings Day. And since I've never celebrated, I think maybe next year I might have to because that will extend our family celebration from New Year's Day into the 6th. And then we're Russian, right? I'm not Russian, but the family is Russian. Your family is. Yeah. So the Russians have a very old and cool tradition called the old new year. Okay. As my old hus- new year. Yeah. So as my husband and my Russian friends call it the old Russian new year. I need more explanation. I'm of trying course. to decide if it's a new year that is old or if it's an old tradition. 
It's an old tradition because at one point, Russia was very, very against transitioning to the Gregorian calendar. So they kept the Julian calendar. And then Mm -hmm. when they transitioned to the Julian calendar, they're like, hey, we're still going to celebrate the Julian calendar New Year. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, you know, if you can celebrate more, that's the win right there. If you're going to adopt something new, but keep the old tradition, that is awesome. According to the article that I read, more than half of all Russians observe Old New Year in some way. And I've observed it uh, with Paul and our Russian friends in St. Louis. And my goodness, was it a party. (laughs) It was amazing. The food, there was like eight hours of food. Just food is my favorite part of New Year's. Course after course after course. It started with the cold course with salads, like all sorts of different salads, beet salads, radish salads, carrot salads, um, I mean, potato salads, like all sorts of salads. And then you went on to a fish course and then you went on to like a salami course and then you went on to a potato course and then you went on to a meat course. It was just nonstop. And I think we went through, it was a table of 14. We went through like five bottles of vodka. Holy and there was smokes. a DJ and we danced that sounds away. great. Yeah, no, it was super fun. It was the most fun New Year, I think I've ever had. I mean, all the food would make it a number one spot for me. The food was amazing. And it was at a Russian a Russian restaurant. Um, so the Russian Orthodox Church, as I mentioned, did not adopt the Gregorian calendar. It still he- adheres to the Julian calendar, and they have separate dates for everything, the old, the new year and the old new year. Uh, but Russia finally caved in, and they did adopt it for official purposes after the Bolshevik Revolution. This is for those history buffs out there in 1918. Because I don't want to embarrass myself, I'm going to go through these really fast. And then we're just going to ask Siri. That sounds good because most definitely you and I don't need to be trying to say these. No, but I'm going to do my best. So You should do it Spanish. Spanish. Enero. German. Januar. French. Oh. Janvier. No, that's not it. Janeiro. I think that's Portuguese. Okay, and I spelled this phonetically for me. Enwery. That's Russian. Japanese, I could not pronounce. And Mandarin is Iroi. Before we ask Siri, I'm just going to say it, you know, like an American. So for Spanish, we have Enero. For German, we have Januar. For French, we have Janvier. Uh, for Portuguese, it's Janeiro. Uh, Russian is Inwari. Japanese, it was so couldn't, bad. Monica couldn't even, Monica couldn't even type couldn't it. Even she couldn't even spell it. Okay, everyone. And in Mandarin, Iroi. Clearly. Like, you know, iPad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay, so here. In Spanish, January is Enero. In German, January is Januá. In French, January is Janvier. In Brazilian Portuguese, January is Janeiro. Janeiro. In Russian, January is Januari. Januari. In Japanese, January is (laughs) Itsugatsu. I I could not. I couldn't even. For sure. Wow. In Mandarin Chinese, January is Ye. So I hope everyone is familiar with how to say January in multiple languages at this point. Probably how do you feel about that? not. No, no. You can rewind. <laughs> feel free to rewind. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just hit that back button a couple of times and then you can impress your friends. So Monica, I don't know about you, but my family has a lot of January birthdays. So for me, it's seven. Not including you, right? Not including me. Okay. Wow, guys, she must have like a lot of January birthdays. We're a big family. Or she can't remember Um, anyone's birthday. Well, I have nieces and nephews, so. Yeah, I don't have any of that. (laughs) Um. Okay, just like you, I've got seven. Do you have friends? Because I happen to, some of the people I'm closest to ever are born in January as well. I don't have as many friends as I do family. So lots of people born in January, great people. And that leads us into, which is one of my favorite lead-in segments, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, the horoscope. There are two different signs. So we've got (laughs) Capricorn, which falls between December 21st and January 20th. And then Aquarius, yay! 
January 21st through February 18th. Okay. So on some of these horoscopes, I'm Aquarius. Um, well, here's the deal. It switched um, sometime in the early 2000s. It's very strange. It has to do with, I don't know, constellations. So like myself, who's on the 20th, considered like on some sort of half sign mm-hmm. because it can go either way. So almost everybody who's on the last day of the horoscope, mm-hmm. there that's how it is for them. It's like a half sign. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, I would like to put a disclaimer out there that I have to give to my daughter. What? I don't believe believe in this, if that's the right word. Um, I don't think that this is going like that. I can't move in and out of this. Like this determines who I am and how everything will be. I don't believe that about it. I do think it's fun. And that's how I personally approach it. Totally, totally agree. Okay. Okay. So Monica, according to Mm horoscope.com, if you are born December 22nd through January 19th, then you are considered a Capricorn and your Mm -hmm. top love match is that of a Virgo. Yeah. And your flower is a pansy. Now you're not currently being ruled by whether or not Mercury is in retrograde because your ruling planet is Saturn. Do you ever look at those parts? I have never looked at what the heck the ruling planet was on anything. I mainly have been like, what is this really obnoxious and or fun character trait to describe me? Now, according to horoscope.com, here's some fun traits. And that's all I care about when it comes to the Zodiac is trait. So I, I care more about that when I go talk to my therapist, but here we have. You mean Catherine. I'm not your therapist? No, actually, <laughs> as everyone has come to learn, this is my therapy. I don't need a therapist anymore because I can just talk nonstop and get it all out there. That's right. So the Capricorns are smart, hardworking, and fully in control of their destiny. Okay, well, maybe I am a Capricorn. That's (laughs) maybe (laughs) they will always get what they set their mind to, both personally and professionally. No excuses. Um, They might get a reputation as being stubborn, but they just know what they want and they know how they want you to behave as well. This is really funny when I read this about people who I know for Mm -hmm. sure are landed directly in the middle of the Capricorn. There's no swaying here and definitely this way. Also, natural rule followers. They love strict rules and hierarchies. Mm. Here's a question that they have, though. Can a Capricorn actually think outside of the box then? You and I being on the Aquarius side, that's probably a big trait we'll find we have, but... According to horoscope.com, they can, but they still want those boundaries because free reign can make them feel paralyzed by all of the choices. They're really good at climbing the corporate ladder. I mean, obviously, as we said before, they do really well in personal and professional Mm -hmm. life. So they're going to be your traditional perfectionist. They're going to stress themselves out trying to do all of this. They have to go to work, have a perfectly cooked meal. They will never admit that they went through the drive-thru or got takeout. (laughs) They're homes are gorgeous put together. This is so funny because me, I'm just going to say it, me and my cousin, Amanda, we've been best friends since she was born and we were both born in January, but we are very much alike, but very, very sure. different in a lot of ways. And I always feel like when I read Capricorns, I'm just reading about her and she is a Capricorn. Sometimes Capricorns are overly focused on what things look like instead of how things feel. And that can cause them to feel a little stifled and unhappy. So they are very loyal and they are funny and have a sly sense of humor. So they sound really fun because they are really fun. The age of Aquarius, it really doesn't get any better than that. The symbol is a water bearer, but it's an air element. Well, our spirit color is sky blue. Guess what the flower is, Monica? I saw that. It's an orchid. Who loves orchids? Ooh, our top love matches are Sagittarius. So let me see who that would be. Would that be my husband? No. No, it's not mine either. (laughs) Mine's a Scorpio. 
Uh, yeah, wait, they're both Scorpios. They are because they're born <laughs> a week apart, just like we are. Weird. So weird. So weird. <laughs> so the ruling house is the 11th house. I have no idea what that means. Ruling planet is Uranus, which never goes into retrograde. So I guess we're fixed, which is a quality. You want to go ahead and tell us what some of the traits are for Aquarius? I do. So up at the top, it says imaginative, idealistic, and intuitive. Aquarius. eyes. <laughs> We're Aquarius. eyes. I don't know. Aquarians, excuse me. Some of the traits for an Aquarius are independent and enigmatical. We're unique. Very individualistic. And it's tough to describe them as a group. So overall, I think what they're trying to say, yeah, we don't group. You can't say all Aquarians are a certain way because no. And we also don't like labels, which I would have to say, I would agree between me and you. We don't like labels. Nope. (laughs) I think that this entire podcast that we do to Monica's in a microphone is very unique and never has a label. We don't even like to say what we're about, which is kind of funny because you should, as they tell us, niche down, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, we wouldn't be being ourselves if we did that. I would definitely agree. And one of the other traits is we want to make the world a better place. And we see ourselves as connected, but we're not going to be grouped. So, you know, when we talk about true crime and how we can't l- listen to certain things because it makes us want to go out and bring justice, mm-hmm. I think that's a very innate part of who we are. Yeah. I mean, it says that right here on horoscope.com that that's just that strong sense of social justice. And here's one that I think is so fitting. And it just reminds me of the other day when I was busy and, and you were just worried that maybe I was upset with you, which is so silly to me, (laughs) but (laughs) the Aquarius, um, are very concerned about others and not just about how they treat them, but how they want to treat other people. And when you start being like that, when you're like always concerned about other people, sometimes that can get flipped the other way I found personally. And you're always worried about what they're thinking. This is a perfect list. The famous (laughs) Aquarius. Yes. Oh, so many fun ones. Ashton Kutcher. I mean, that 70s show, who could forget? We've got Shakira. Shakira, yeah. Bill Collins. Um, My personal favorite, Michael Jordan. How awesome. He's born in February. So they have here listed The Weeknd, which is a band. Were they all born in (laughs) in the sign of Aquarius? I think that's kind of a, a lie. Maybe they were. I mean, you and I are both Aquarians. But an entire band? Monica, The weekend is one dude. Oh. (laughs) Never mind. Like. Scratch that. I'm so, I don't listen to music. No, I'm not going to. I just went and clicked on it and I was like, wait, that's The weekend." I was like, The weekend." (laughs) I don't know. Christian Bale. I love him. And Justin Timberlake. I mean, who doesn't love Justin? He's great. Oh, Harry Styles. My niece would be excited about that. Oh, I like how it talks about our look. You make cool look effortless and you wear what you like with confidence and people take notice. Although I do think that last part's true. I mean, you literally wear furs. I love fur. I almost wore fur to drop the kids off the other day. It was 43 degrees here in Florida. (laughs) It also says that we have the ability to see the best in all people, even if those people don't see qualities in themselves. And I would say that is accurate for myself. Definitely. We're amazing. I mean, come on. Obviously, if you read horoscope.com and you read Aquarius, you will think amazing person, Monica. That's what you think. That's right. That's right. (laughs) All right. Let's move on to the Chinese horoscope. And we're not going to go quite as deep into this because if you just go to, let's see, the Chinese restaurant that my family and I would go to every New Year's Day for like 15 years, it would just have the little placemat, right? With the years and your sign. Sheep or goat, rat, dragon, snake, monkey, and I don't know the rest. But it said 1980, year of the monkey. I was like, yes, I'm a monkey. So as I got older, I did a little research. I was like, yeah, this sounds like me. Curious, a little playful, a little mischievous, blah, blah, blah. Well, come to find out when you actually look at the Chinese horoscope, because the Chinese New Year is based on the lunar cycle, 
The Year of the Horse began on January 7th, 1978. The Year of the Goat slash Sheep began on January 28th, 1979. So you're really the goat and I'm really a horse. So I think we both were having the same problem. I thought I was a goat, but I'm really a horse. Exactly. Because so much the year better. It doesn't actually end until January 28th, 1979, mm-hmm. and you were born before then. So the horse yes. continues all the way through then. Same thing with the monkey. It goes all the way through the middle of February, which is crazy. Well, that makes sense with their new year kind right. of going back and forth, I guess. There's a lot that you can dig into because I was curious and I was like, oh, I'm such a monkey. I'm a monkey. I'm a monkey. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm a goat. I'm a goat. Well, I want to know what made you think you were a monkey because I'm going to look that up right now. That's what I'm going to look at. Let's see why Monica thought she was a monkey. Okay. Monkey is the ninth. They're cheerful, energetic, and re and uh, represent flexibility. Now, this Mm -hmm. is from yourchineseastrology.com, everyone. So don't really know. People under the sign of the monkey are wise, intelligent, confident, charismatic, loyal, inventive, and have leadership. Their weaknesses are they're egotistical, arrogant, crafty, restless, and snobbish. I actually cannot see you as any of those weaknesses. No, I can't. That's why I love all the strengths. (laughs) All the strengths are amazing, but truly you're a sheep. So let's see what that is so the sheep is solidarity harmony and calmness no no offense a mild-mannered shy imaginative determined and have good taste okay you are polite i don't know about shy um the negative side let's see pessimistic unrealistic short-sighted and slow in behavior i feel like none of these are you and probably Also why I hated being called a goat, because the goat is awful. (laughs) It's a terrible, terrible animal. And listen to that description. Who wants to be a goat? Okay, so I'm going to go to the horse, which is what... Go to the horse. Um, Okay, so the horse. Indomitable spirit, always moving towards a goal. Active, energetic, clever, quick-witted, fashionable, agile, popular among others, and have the ability to persuade. Okay, well, I would say... I think you're all of those. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Oh, well, and here's the other side. Welcome to the other side of Monica in a freaking nutshell. Selfish, arrogant, and overconfident. I would say that those are definitely some of my pitfalls. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Ooh, unlucky things. That's interesting. My unlucky direction is Northwest, which is funny because I grew up in Northwest Arkansas and live in Northwest Ohio. It also says my lucky thing is Northwest. I'm they telling cancel, you. They cancel each other they out. They cancel each other out. Story of my life right there. That's I will take being a horse over that gross goat. And you are just totally not a goat. You just, I know, right? just say you're a monkey. Just not. I just, I'm going to embrace the monkey. It's embrace great. the monkey. Hello to Monica's. So let's <laughs> talk right. about that. <laughs> my birthday is January 20th, also known as Inauguration Day and occasionally Martin Luther King Jr. Day observed. I, every four years, either have a really splendid birthday or pooper duper birthday. <laughs> Not going to ask you which one the last no. one No. You know, everyone, you can form you. your own conclusions, but just know every four years, my birthday is affected by how you vote. <laughs> <laughs> be prepared, everyone. So my birthday, the 26th, it used to be every four years or so was the Super Bowl. And I thought that was very cool. Oh, true. My birthday fall on the Super Bowl. Then 2001 and the Twin Towers attack happened. And Mm -hmm. now they have that skip week. So now it never falls on the Super Bowl. Brady's birthday falls on the Super Bowl now. Monica, now that we've gone through January and we dipped our toe in the Monica's, let's talk about the name Monica. Ooh, yes, let's do. I've always been fascinated with what my name means in part, thanks to my parents. Well, in all thanks to my parents, because, you know, they read it to me when I was younger and uh, were like, this is what your name means. And, you know, do you embody any of these traits? And the answer is yes. All the good ones. Obviously Um, you and I always embody the good traits of mm -hmm. anything we come across. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Well, what does our name mean? There's an uncertain origin to the name Monica, but it's probably more Latin from yeah. Monere. Yep, it means that's... to warn, counsel, 
advice. Yes, which I feel like is very fitting. And I have fully embraced that my entire yep. life. Me too. My dad said I was an advisor. And guess what? People come to me for advice all the time. And guess what? I go to you yes. for advice all the time. Do I go to you for advice? We don't know. That probably has to do with me being a horse and selfish or something. I don't know. Or I just <laughs> no, have small oh, children I'm sorry. and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? Arrogance. It's my arrogance. Yes, um, okay, well, yeah. Well, yes, I have traveled that journey at least. So the color for the name Monica is pink. I didn't know that. We've got uh, some analysis for each letter. M stands for zealous. O for mysterious. N for helpful. I for zany. Okay, totally believe that. C Wait, for- what? How are they coming up with these? I don't know. We're just making them up because usually <laughs> M we- would be M for moody, not Something. No, no, no. It's I'm an confused. analysis. It's not, it's a letter what? analysis. What does it's that not, even it's not mean? It's not M for Moody, O for uh, Austin. I know, N but. N for negative. No, no, I'm rejecting this. I am rejecting this. How are we analyzing letters? Like, Our I need acrostic to know this. poem about Monica. M for mesmerized. Captured yes. by your beauty. <laughs> o for is outrageous. You're just so fun. N for is natural. Her beauty and her care. I for infectious. I'm really stuck on you. C for courteous. The way you are to others. A is for alive. That's how you make me feel. Monica, that is a beautiful poem. That's a beautiful. That is. And it's very, very accurate. <laughs> Sorry, this page. I'm sorry I found this page. Where just, is this page? Just click on the link. Okay, Meaning okay. Of the name, baby. Okay, <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm sorry, everyone. You have to go I'm through crying. some. You, you could, you could just fast forward because it's, it's very little self-centered here when we get to the mic. <laughs> Okay, so now I see letter analysis, which is very weird. But maybe but, the letters stand for something. Yeah, they must. It's something I'm not familiar with. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I gotcha. Didn't just make it up. No, I <laughs> knew you didn't make it up, but I'm like, I'm not feeling this. But I love the acrostic poem Me too. about Monica. Yeah, definitely mesmerized, captured by your beauty, of course. How about oh. characteristics of Monica based on numerology analysis? Oh gosh, let's see what those are. So do you see the characteristics of Monica? I do. <laughs> numerology analysis. Why don't you read it? Okay. Loyal, perfectionist, proud, discreet, loves to read and research, successful in business. I would say that is pretty darn accurate. You get freaked out between the horse... <laughs> The Zodiac and now the numerology of our name. What in the world? I know. I know. It's a little bit creepy. A little bit creepy. Oh, and the poem that was read about us was spot on. Yeah, I think so. Famous Monica's in history. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I can tell you one right now. St. Augustine's Without looking. Mother. No, Monica friggin Lewinsky. Oh, why did you have to lead with that one? I was going to bury that. Because, because Monica, that whole thing happened when we were in college and I was from Arkansas. So it's just like, uh, thanks, Monica. But we were saved by the TV series Friends. That's right. Monica Geller. Other than that, I don't know. When Geller was around for 10 years and Lewinsky was around for one. Exactly. Thankfully. Thankfully. Nobody. Funny little story about that. Uh, When we were in college and I sold Cutco, I made a phone call one summer to try and sell some knives. And I introduced myself. I did the whole spiel. And the lady's like, yeah, yeah. Why don't you come by? And your name again? Um, She's like, you said Lewinsky? I'm like, no. No. She no, did she not. did. She totally did. <laughs> you said Monica Lewinsky. I'm like, no, Grenwick. No. Monica Grenwick. <laughs> it was hysterical. I could not stop myself from laughing. I was like, no, Oh my not, gosh. Not like, not that's Lewinsky. just not right. Here are some notable people. Monica Bellucci. She's an Italian actress. Oh, yes. She's gorgeous. So yeah. here's my favorite one. Monica of Hippo. Hippos are actually my favorite animal. She happens to be a Numidian saint, and she was the mother of St. Augustine, going back to my philosophical roots. There aren't a whole lot of famous Monicas, which is a good thing because that makes plenty of room for us. Well, Monica Potter, she's also an actress. 
Nobody knows who that is. Yeah, they do. Eh, I had no idea. Okay. I mean, there are tons. In yes, exactly. Like Mexican footballers, American mathematician, Monica Van Dieren, um, an American Serbian tennis player, Monica Sellis. Hello. Everyone knows Monica Sellis. I know. I said there weren't many. I didn't say there weren't any. But there are a bunch. We just don't know them because we're not into like Venezuelan chemistry. Yeah. I, or Romanian we, politics. Yeah. Yeah, there's room for us to make it onto this famous birthdays list. I totally think so. And everyone, this is from Wikipedia. So we're going straight to the original source. Penelope Cruz's sister, who looks identical to her, is Monica Cruz. Mon, did you have any nicknames growing up? I did. But before we get into that, oh, yeah. I do okay. have a question. Sure. How did your parents pick Monica? Uh, so the story goes like this. When I asked one time, my mom said, well, originally we wanted to name you Peaches. I said, uh-huh. That would Sorry. be great. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that idea. But then they went to a birthday party for a little girl who was turning like five or something. And her name was Monica. And they decided on Monica. Thank you, mom and dad, for going to that birthday party. Did they know before you were born? I mean, were they real set on that? It wasn't long before I was born. When we were growing up, there weren't a lot of Monicas. No, not. The origin of my name is this. My mom and my dad had two boys. Jamie and Mickey. So James and Michael. And then whenever I came along, I don't know why once you have two of the same sex that you seem to think you're not going to have the other sex, but they were just confident that I was going to be a boy. So when I was born, I was not. And they had the name Veronica, which I absolutely love. They had Veronica picked, but like what happened with Mickey and Jamie, the shortening of the names, they did not want my name shortened to Ronnie. Oh, and, yeah. And have me end up with a boy's name anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they said, Veronica, no, no, no. So this is the story. And I have actually never looked it up, but that there was a movie that they liked called The Carpet Baggers. And there was a beautiful dark haired woman in it. One of the characters named Monica. And they thought, why don't we do Monica after this character in the movie Carpetbaggers? And that is how I got my name. I've never seen that, but I should, which is kind of crazy because it is a movie from 1964, which is kind of crazy because, you know, I love all that old stuff and I've never seen it. Oh, that's that's a cool story. Oh, my gosh. This girl is super slutty on the (laughs) Carpetbaggers. Are you shocked that your parents liked the movie now? And she's blonde. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I feel what like is... I'm being traumatized right I now. I am. I am. <laughs> so funny. She is blonde though. So definitely want to make that correction. At least everyone. I did look it up and Monica in that movie was blonde. No, one yeah. interesting thing about names is the nicknames that evolve from the name. There's yeah. no shortening, or as my dad would say, truncating of the name. A really, like you could go with no. Mon, you could go with Mona. That's what I was growing up with my family, Mona, uh, Moni, uh, but that's about it, right? I had nicknames though. You're like, probably the first person to call me Mon. What do people call you? Well, I know. So Monica? No, people (laughs) usually just called me Monica, but my dad called me Monster. Um, Oh, that's cute. My family nicknames, so cousins, aunts, everyone, Mon Mon. Mon Mon. Oh, that's cute. And we call Brady Brad Brad. So I guess I've passed it down because it works. That's adorable. I was called Mouse for a long time, too. Aw, super cute. In high school, though, I was called Q, and I'll tell you why, okay. which is kind of funny. It does stem from our names, which is why I'm sharing this, mm-hmm. um, because in basketball, my coach, well, I don't know why, but he called me Monique instead of Monica, oh. mm-hmm. and then it went from Monique to Monique Q, because let's be funny and then pronounce it like that, to everyone just called me Q for three years straight. That was just my name. I like my that. coach, my friends. Yeah, it was pretty cool. When I played soccer, Monica is it is a yes. mouthful when you're trying yes. to shout. Yes. So my name was shortened to Mo, and I was Mo for about three years. 
don't remember that. You yeah. were Mo. I was. A little bit in was college. Was not my favorite nickname. No. Ever, not gonna uh-uh. lie. Mm-mm. No. I would have don't preferred Mon. Out. Just give me Mon. But yeah, no. Nicknames are interesting, especially when it's tied to the name. Oh, hey, here's some here's some cool facts from popularbabynames.com. Okay. Between 1880 and 2019, there were 505,905 births of Monica in the countries below, which represent an average of 3,640 births of children bearing the name Monica per year. Wow. I have a good story to go with this, considering it talks about between 1880 and 2019. Now, as you and I were discussing earlier, we don't know a lot of Monicas. Honestly, I don't even know hardly any other Monicas, but I just don't know them. They're, they're not that common not like if you were a jen or a jessica during our age one time i was in a store and i kid you not and this was the strangest thing i was in my 20s and this elderly lady was checking out and then there was a lady probably in her 40s at the time and then me in my 20s and the lady checking out gave her license for something probably because she wrote a check this was a while ago (laughs) and then the lady in between us said oh my goodness your name is Monica. My name is Monica too. And then I said, you have got to be kidding me. Your name is Monica and your name is Monica. My name is Monica too. And then kid you not. Was there a third or fourth? Yes. The lady behind me goes, my daughter's name is Monica. And I looked down and there was just like little four-year-old girl. So the furthest extent for me, it was a similar situation. I was at a subway and the woman behind the counter was who was making my sandwich. Her name was Monica. And the woman behind me was named Monica. <gasps> and we all just looked at each other. We're like, oh, my goodness. We Isn't that crazy? Entered. It is. It's crazy because it's not yeah. that common. And honestly, if you listen to our very first episode, you will know that is why you and I first really got to know yeah. each other is because you said, hi, I'm Monica. I see your name's Monica. I mean, that's how you introduced yourself was pretty much like I had to come in and say hi because I've never met another Monica. No. And I had really at that point only met one other Monica and she was a little girl. She was about five. We must, we must be meant to be friends. Obviously. Ah, well, this just made me feel so good, Monica, talking about all the great things about January and the name Monica and ourselves, but we're probably nauseating people at this point. Oh, yeah. If anyone's made it this far, you get a gold star, dude. You get a Uh, gold star. Hey, go to our Instagram. Let us know that you listened to the whole show and we'll send you a little something in the mail. Yeah, I like that. We have a couple of cute little things to send you. Absolutely. So friends, we do hope that you enjoyed this episode, no matter what you're doing, folding socks, deep cleaning the house, picking up after Christmas, or just, you know, enjoying your family time or your alone time. We really love that you choose to listen to us and spend time with us because we love you. Absolutely. All right. Until next time. Bye.